In this video, my aim is to give you a good understanding on how the Blue Pill platform is designed and how all the different bits and pieces are clicking together in it. The Blue Pill server is the first Blue Pill product we launched, and it's a tiny server basically that would give you just the Blue Pill and Reactor and Scours in a in a, in a software package basically that would connect to Unisketch panels and enable them to tap into all the power of Blue Pill. At this point in time, we have most of our products with Blue Pill inside. It means when you buy a Red Fusion Live, you'll get it with Blue Pill power inside. If you get a Master Key One or MK48 or an RCP Pro, it has Blue Pill inside. The thing is that if you have a Red Fusion Live on Unisketch or any panel on Unisketch, you can connect it to a standalone Blue Pill and have it act exactly the same as if you have had a Red Fusion Live with Blue Pill inside. So it's also a technology that involves all our uh, legacy panels from the last decade of production from Skyway and takes it into the exciting future of the Blue Pill. If you log in on the Blue Pill, most of you will see Reactor. That's the application that binds panels and devices together. And that's what we'll be looking at here because it's actually a binary application running on the Blue Pill and it will usually connect to external panels. And that means over the raw panel protocol, we will read triggers and send feedback to the panels using Reactor. And those panels can be both Blue Pill inside and also Unisketch panels. Then every one of these panels will have an IP address and they will also have an ID to identify the panel inside of Reactor. We need to know where all the configuration should go. So we have panel ID one and two and three and so on, and they'll be associated with an IP address, which we could change if we wanted to. It's also so that the, the panel, the blue pill itself is actually a panel technically. And that means we'll be talking to the blue pill itself over raw panel protocol. And that goes through a little binary application called the hardware manager. On the other side, we have all the device cores. And device cores is also binary applications that take care of talking to different types of devices. For instance, here you see the core BMD ATEM, that's the Blackmagic ATEM switcher device core, that will talk to one or more ATEM switches and each of those will have an ID. Then if we want to talk to Canon cameras with the XC protocol, that is the device core called Core Canon XC. And you only have that once. There's only one binary running and that will connect to as many pan um, sorry Canon cameras that you have chosen for your configuration they would also have IDs so that we can reference them in our configurations. And then finally, in this case, we have a um, direct out Prodigy uh, MP device core, which talks to just a single device, also with ID number one. But these IDs are not colliding because they are IDs within each their device core. So that's how we have these binaries separated. So how does the device cores and reactor talk? Well, through something called gRPC, which is a remote procedure call framework developed by Google. It's open source, it's highly efficient. And that means this network connection between the devices and reactor is, is really smart, fast, efficient, um, small packet size, all kinds of good stuff there. But it is actually like a unified API to all the devices out here because they have their own protocols. The XE protocol, there is a protocol for the Prodigy MP, the ATEM switcher has a UDP protocol, but the gRPC interface will have a unified protocol between the device core and reactor. The config is what binds all this together. So to have the access to devices mapped over to the panels and the hardware components, displays, buttons, knobs, faders, joysticks, etc. We need a configuration and that's actually written in JSON. So even for those of you who like JSON, you would uh, probably have a, a fantastic time uh, tweaking the configurations from a, a text editor. So that's, that's how these two dimensions is bound together. And that's like the main job of Reactor. But it's also so that if you had a Blue Pill Inside product like this, Rack Fusion Live, then everything you have seen in this blue box, reactor, hardware manager, the device course would be running inside that panel. But the Rack Fusion Live could still be the master panel or the host panel of a number of guest panels. And the guest panels would be others like these. And we'll see that in a moment when we get to some practical application of this, that this is actually how, how it works. But regardless, reactor would still talk to itself, its own panel through a network socket with raw panel. 
if we look at the device cost, there's another interesting fact about um, the fact that the device costs are individual binary applications. That means that if we wanted to load balance or for whatever reason, latency on the network, for instance, we might want to take the device core binary and move it out close to the device or to the other side of the, of the globe and run it on a blue pill right there. And then Reactor would connect with the efficient gRPC protocol to that blue pill serving that access. Or it could also be as we do at trade shows with Skahoy here, we have a, a ton of individual Reactor instances running on each panel. But instead of having each panel and its device core connecting 20 times to the poor devices like cameras and so on, they, they wouldn't be able to cope with that, most of them. So rather we have a blue pill that would run all the device cores. And that blue pill has a single connection to a camera, an ATEM switch and so on. And then all our reactor instances would connect to that blue pill to get access to all the devices. So it's really smart that we can do this. And that architecture provides access to these kind of things. But you can also mix it. So you could have some device cores running locally on your panel and other device cores remotely on blue pills if you want to. Finally, I want to just highlight that the fact that device cores are actually individual binaries means that we can have other applications, like in this case, an application called device core TCP link that would connect to the device cores using the gRPC interface. And then on the other side, provide alternative access to these device cores. So that's the service, that's the product that we are selling. And that gives AV integrators a very easy way to interface with basically anything. It's hugely popular for for ATEM switches, where we have a, a text-based, ASCII-based integration with ATEM switches through this. But you can also have exactly the same for cameras and all other kind of devices that we are supporting. So that's really neat. And even for testing, we have an application running on our laptops that allow us to connect to device cores and, and do testing during our development cycles. So now we want to see a little bit how this works in real life. And therefore, we'll change over to a web browser where we have Reactor running. So this is Reactor, guys. In the home screen, which is what you see first in Reactor, you'll see we have the Rack Fusion Live here. We also have Ethernet GPI link that is linked to the Rack Fusion Live. They are sharing a configuration. Down here, we have Master Key 48, MK48, and Master Key 1. They are also sharing a configuration. And finally, we have RCP Pro. Now, these have a missing IP. So we have not set an IP address for the, these panels. And if we look at the Rack Fusion Live, it's actually not even having an IP address. It just has the, the label host, which means that it's actually the physical panel we are running this instance of Reactor from. Now in here for panel configuration, you can see the panel ID, which we could change to something else if we wanted to. You can set it active, non-active, have a friendly name for it. You can set sleep time, dim time, display brightness, and all kinds of things like that, including having uh, constraints like locking it to a serial number and so on. So this configuration here is customized. It is specially designed for these two. It's handmade, basically, while this configuration down here is one that comes in the system. And if we open up, we see that master key 1v2 has different options here. If I choose the one small, then it wouldn't try to add a master key 48. Uh, we'll see that in a moment that th this configuration we have chosen actually tries to do that. It identifies an MK48 and a master key 1 as the two panels that it would like to be associated with. It has something called constant sets, but these blue buttons are basically configurations or settings for your panels in the easy way that is. So for instance, here you can reorganize and provide alternative labels for your inputs on the ATEM switcher. If you go in here, you can add small code snippets to add functionality like router control or audio control easily. If you go to the RCP Pro, you have a camera selector where we could uh, set up cameras in this form, but actually the more popular way would be to click here and then you can select, well, that was not a camera, was it? But uh, if we then uh, go in here, we could remove this one, uh, this entry. We could also do it up here, by the way. But then I would go down here and say, okay, yeah, I want to add this camera and I'll just hold down shift as I do and then I can add another one. And now I have added two cameras to my RCP Pro. So this is how we configure in the simplest form by using the blue buttons on the home screen. I want you to notice that we have ID1, ID2, ID4, and ID3, and then finally ID5 here. Also for the 
devices over here, notice how we have an Atom mini switcher, we are connected to it. We have also an Atom constellation, we are connected to it. We have a Canon camera, which we are connected to, and two PDC cameras from Panasonic we are connected to. There's also a Kumo router, but it's apparently not connected at the moment. And then finally, a direct out Project DMP. So these are all the devices that we can access. And if we go into the packages tab up here, then we can see these are running as the binary packages on SkyOS. SkyOS is the um, the custom built Linux we have made for the blue pills. And if you go into settings, then you get a little bit in touch with SkyOS because this is where you can update it, for instance, like press this button to update, you can reboot it, we can uh, identify you won't use a whole lot. It's also possible to completely reset it, maybe be careful with that. We have IP configuration for DHCP or just static IP. And then there is a number of cool functions like remote support that allows us, if you enable that, to to log in remotely and help you with configuration. And there's other things that you want to adjust down here, including um, the um, authentication that might be interesting and, and useful for you. If we go into, oh, wait, I think we also might have Wi-Fi in some units, not this one. Okay, so we go into packages and this is where you see ADA Kumo is running, Atom is running, Canon X is running, Direct Out Prodigy is running. We also have the Panasonic PTC running because those device calls are part of what Reactor is currently managing. Actually, I think it's said if you go in here, there's a little warning. It says that Reactor is managing this. So keep your hands off. Otherwise, you could stop and restart these. But actually, Reactor works as a whole like that. It, it manages those other binaries, turns them on and off. But actually, if you go into the package manager, this is what package manager's job is. In here, we also find a few device calls that is currently not running because they are not included in the running config on, on Reactor. Reactor itself has this binary down here. It's also running. We have System Manager, which takes care of the Packages tab and the Settings tab here. And then we have Hardware Manager, which is what basically talks to the hardware on the Rack Fusion Live. And if we go in here, we see options like Listen on Socket. This is what you need to do if Reactor is supposed to connect to itself. But if you want a a, a blue pill inside panel to be available as a raw panel uh, asset on the network, then you would enable listen on port and then save that, of course. Notice the port number. This is how you connect on TCP. Auto mode would be great. Then you can have both binary and ASCII modes of, of connecting. And uh, there's also the possibility that you can lock a panel, a, a raw panel panel to certain IPs and having a, a maximum number of clients. And that would help you to install some sort of basic security for what can connect to a panel and, of course, uh, send feedback to the panel and so on. So this is what gets um, shown if you if you go to the details page of these each of these packages, then you see options, you see uh, log files that you can use to debug and so on. And that is true for all of these. Uh, device core connector is something that will allow external applications to connect to the device cores. And then finally, if you want to update some of these, well, you have a button out here that helps you to, oh, sorry about that, we can go back. There is an update button here. So All the other packages you want to install on your blue pill is found further down. These are the available packages. You can search in this list. You just click the install button and it gets installed on your blue pill. This of course requires you to have an internet connection. If you don't, you can always click this button and then you can click and browse here to find a file which is a signed package that you can install on the blue pill. These can be downloaded from websites like devices.skahoy.com where you can find all the device cores for your blue pills and there's a download link for each one of them so you can get the latest version to do offline updates. If we go back to the home tab here, there's a really cool thing that I wanna show you. And that is any of these panels. If you click on the panel here, then you get straight to the simulator. And the simulator gives you a screen view of your panel. So actually, this is super useful for configuration and sometimes even remote control. So you can click these buttons and then this is actually how the physical panel reacts. So that's really useful. But if we go from here and into the configuration tab, you'll now see the last part of what Reactor is. We have the home screen for all the easy overview. We have simulator for playing with it. We have packages for installing and configuration is where we bind the devices and the panels together. And this is a huge chapter. So I just want to cover a few things related to this overview that I'm giving you. And that is, how is it that Reactor knows where to put configuration now that we have all these panels we can just add? And that is a little thing. 
I, th I said that this configuration is JSON. So you'll in a moment see some JSON code. But if you if we look at this, what you see is a layer to include configuration for the RecFusion Live. And actually that file is our customized configuration for the RecFusion Live. This one, this layer here, is including another layer for the master key one. This is the procured layer that comes with the blue pill device. It's called the file is called scahoy.controllers.masterkey1v2.atem.me medium. And that long name is the file name to identify the configuration that we chose that included the master key one and the MK48. And this configuration, if I click this little button to edit it, I can see a lot of information. If I scroll through, it's massive, the amount of information in here to do this. It's even including other files. You see them up here. These are other files that are included in our configuration. But the thing that I wanted to show you is that this configuration knows about itself that it is compatible with one panel called MK48 and another panel called Master Key 1 V2. Those are the two panels that this would like to be paired up with to function. This is what it's designed for. So I want you to just notice that because if we go back to the home screen, the, the panels Master Key 1 and MK, MK48 and Master Key 1 were actually ID number 4 and 3. And if we go back to the configuration, that's a smart thing because the root layer that in fact includes this layer has configuration of its own where it is saying, and you'll see that if I just collapse a few of these, then you'll see for these layers, it says here, default master key one configuration. And inside of this, we'll find a mapping that basically says that anything that was configured inside of this file for panel number two should be mapped over to panel number three in the real world. And anything configured for panel number one inside this file should be mapped to panel number four in the real world. So you see, we could use this configuration multiple times in the same tree and just map them to different final destinations and they would be separate. So this is some of the amazing beauties of Reactor that many of you will never need, but which is there and that makes it a system for the next decades, I'm tempted to say. So I'm really proud about what we have here. And this is just giving you that kind of overview because there's so much more to say about configurations deep down inside this whole layer tree. But that's for a different video.